Welcome to The Short Score, your weekly update of rope and news from around the industry, where you can find the latest on the sport from the pro rodeo ranks to the jackpot world. I'm Taylor Vollen, and I'm your host. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Score. Yes, this isn't your usual host, Chelsea, I'm sure you can tell. This is Taylor, I'm the host of The Short Score. If you haven't listened before, I'm just taking over for Chelsea. We're here in Vegas, which means this is the first episode of our Vegas edition of The Score. The first round of the 2023 NFR is officially in the books, and it was an interesting round of Team Ropen, I would say. Clint Summers and Jake Long started the finals off with a bang, going 4-2 to win the round, which is actually a first for Summers. And I think it's pretty neat that it comes in a year where he actually had to fight tooth and nail just to even return to Vegas. We're down here in the press room of the Thomas and Mac, and Chelsea caught up with our round winners for this episode. This episode is presented by Resistall. Resistall has supported us in our multimedia coverage of all things Team Roping and Rope Horse since 2012. Check out Resistall's new footwear collection, Prime to Ring in 2024 with a bang. Oh, yeah, welcome back. Yeah. Welcome, welcome back to the media room, Clint. Yeah, this is nice. Never been here before. <laughs> Um, it's a fun spot to be. What, what it is? This is your first go round win. It is. Did you go into this round? I mean, you were you were excited about that steer back there. Yes, I was. I remembered you saying that you thought yeah. that steer was pretty okay. So. I did. Uh, that steer, like I said, he started good. Head up in the air. His horns were great, and uh, most of all, I felt like he would handle pretty good. And uh, which transmission? I feel like I can get a wild one and set him up for Jake on, on that horse, and. Uh, like I said, Jake likes to throw fast. I feel like if I set him up and do my job, it should be a good week. We will let Jake talk here in a second, but you really did ping the barrier and, like, talk about your start, talk about the run. Well, the start here is pretty fast. If uh, if you if we ever get to rope in a World Series setup, this is it. Because if the steer starts, you can pretty much go. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be a hard deal as long as your steer is true and gets through the gates. It should be probably one of the easiest setups all year. The only thing that makes it a little harder is there's however many 17,000 people on top of you in there, and obviously you got some uh, your blood pressure's up and all that. But um, it's just I don't know. It's a different deal, and I hope that it can continue all week. Um, Jake, tell me what did you see in the run? Uh, Clint did an awesome job. Honestly, I um, I told him I I think every time I've won around, I really like I felt like I healed this year really really good and tonight I really didn't um which I know it's early in the week and everything but I took an extra swing and I was a little bit bummed with myself but like I said my first round history has not been great so deep down I was excited just to get him caught and then when I looked up and seen 4-2 I it, it kind of caught me off guard really because it, it really just didn't feel like that fast for a run but yeah he did an excellent job his horse did awesome and I, I think if that run will keep clocking like that and we rope good, it should be should be a good week. Did you rope around the hips? I did. did you, were you did, were you nervous at all there for a second, or was it like you bet? No, no, it was tight. It, it wasn't even near. It was uh, like it was I said. I, yeah, yeah. It really was. It was the last two runs we made for money, uh, or rodeo money yeah. anyway. It's yeah, it jumped up over the hips, so which that does help a lot. So uh, if it would have stayed down low, you know, we probably would have been four three four four still, but maybe not got the outright win. Did um. Did you guys go to Arizona and Jackpot? Have you been, like, on the Jackpot Trail very much? Staying no. sharp, or what's your prep been, like, the last couple months? No, we decided. We talked about it. Jake Jake even had told me at first. He's like, man, I think I might go even if you don't want to. And we were kind of back and forth. Then I was kind of wanting to go. And then we're like, it's probably best if we just stay here and practice. We had 45 head of big Mexicans that are stout at the house. Oh, yeah, you said you And, here. you know, like, I felt like they was as real as I've ever had. Mm-hmm. And uh, just felt like that we need to stay there and try to get – keep this run rolling you know like i said earlier sioux falls is real similar and uh if we could just stay in that groove i felt like this is way more important than arizona don't get me wrong arizona is great a lot of great jackpots but living in stephenville you jackpot every day of the week and this here i mean this is the super bowl and it's my dream i've always wanted to do good here and put myself in a chance to have a chance for a gold buckle and i felt like that was our best decision me and jake talked about it and so here we are I'm sure we have it somewhere on the website right now, but what horse is that that you were on, Jake? Uh, I'm riding Roger. Uh, he started the year off as my backup horse. Yeah. And then CJ, I don't know what brought it on. I broke my foot um, in February actually riding Roger. He tripped over a steer. And uh, 
I don't know if it was from having a broke foot that CJ figured out how to get around me or what it was, but me and him just haven't been on the same page really all year. And I got on Roger. I started the summer on him, and then CJ kind of started feeling like himself again, so I got on him again, and then he, we didn't get along very good, so I got back on Roger um, really right after Spanish, and then I finished a year out. I didn't run another steer on, on CJ. And uh, I was really battling which one to ride here um, just because – CJ is good in this building. He does good and finishes a run real strong. But Roger's just, he's easier for me to rope on. He's got, I, I don't mean this in a terms it sounds like, but he's the closest feel to Colonel that I've ever rode. Not, he's not Colonel at all, but his stride and the way he comes through the corner and the way I get to set my rope down, it feels like I'm on him as close as it's been anything I've ever rode. So, well, Colonel thinking back colonel i haven't asked questions about colonel in a while mm-hmm. colonel was big and, and like longer a little bit longer strided of a heel horse yep. is that do you think feel like roger's a little bit longer strided yeah, yeah. I, I do I, I think uh i think that's a lot of the feel mm-hmm. he's a little longer stride and cj's just cj's a good horse but he stays flat and if he wants to take my throw away it happens faster than anything i've ever been on if he decides not to work and so roger is not you know he's not as flat fast he's not as flashy but he's easier and so that's why i decided to start on him and i figured worst case it was going to make us too slow and then i could get on cj and speed things up got it clint speaking of now we're on horse strides accidentally for a second transmission stride i mean he is a big sucker big. how i mean and that doesn't necessarily compute or isn't what you would think a person would ride here right man for that horse to be that big he moves his feet exceptional uh he don't he's not as short strided as joe don't get me wrong but for his size he is uh transmission's great with his feet and man i don't know i'm just blessed to have that sucker yeah i mean i hope you don't have to step off transmission however you do have did you bring four I out here bring four. that's like probably you have more head horses yeah. here than uh, clay, clay smith has a lot because there's the whole family's here but yeah what, tell well, me. when i started heading I feel like head horses is the name of the game. Don't get me wrong, you got to be able to rope too. But if you got the head horses, that's the start. And uh, I've been at it now for a few years, and my goal is to have the very best there is, not one, not two, but four, five, six of them. And I want, I want to have the best there is. If something happens to one, I want to be able to get on another one that's just as good or better. And that's, that's what I've been after. And I did. I brung four. I brung Transmission, Joe, and I have a little gray mare that belongs to Trevor. That's very good, fast-footed, and I have my... I think my Tristan would argue that it belongs to Tristan. Oh, uh, yeah, you're probably right on that. That's probably a tease horse. <laughs> but, uh, and then I have Kobe, my uh, my newest, and uh, he's pretty good, too. Probably a little green for this setup, but he's my grand entry horse. What did he think of the grand... I didn't get to see the grand entry. What did he, was he impressed? Oh, man, that horse is... He's like a 6-year-old and a 20-year-old body. Yeah. He don't care about nothing, and uh, I'm actually probably going to ride Joe a few nights in the grand entry. I feel like he deserves to go in there. Yeah. So I'm going to swap them out. That's awesome. Very good. Well, thank you.